This morning, I want to talk to you about the subject of uh, assurance of salvation. <coughs> I believe that's a major issue for some folks. I don't know necessarily that anyone here has that issue, that you know the Lord and don't have assurance of your salvation, but uh, maybe you know somebody that struggles with that. I know back when I was a young Christian, back in 1981, I was 21 years old, and I had been a believer for about three years. I was working a third shift job at a place or a company here in Evansville that no longer exists. And on occasion, I'd be laying in bed resting before I had to go in to work at 11 o'clock at night. Thank God those days are over. I was a third shift person, but I worked plenty of uh, nights. But during those times, thoughts about God would cross my mind. As I lay there, I would ask myself questions like, Is God real? Am I really going to a place called heaven? Now you have to understand that I was not a nominal Christian. I was an on-fire young Christian man at the time. Uh, I worked at a, a pretty rough place and with a lot of rough people. I probably witnessed to half the people there every night. I mean, I was, a, I was a, an evangelist. Didn't even know it. But I, I would be having Bible studies during lunch break and breaks. And I'd have people saying, I'm going to church Sunday. But back then I had a little different uh, uh, formula in witnessing. You all heard me talk about that before, but I was a little uh, rough around the edges. So, uh, you know, I, I take a, a match many times and I burn that person with it. I say, feel that, smell that, turn or burn. You know, I mean, that was kind of my, my, my message for him. Of course, now I'm more focused on God loves you and He has a wonderful plan for your life. So, you know, you do mature in some ways. And in some ways, we're still working on it. But, uh, but I, I was, I mean, I was really on fire and dedicated and loved God very much, but I would still have these thoughts. Sometimes it would cross my mind. You know, is this real? Is God real? And, uh, you know, am I going to heaven? So, as I got to thinking about this, and these thoughts that would come across my mind, I would begin to reason, if God is not real, how did we get here? Well, you know, evolution just never made any sense to me. You know, they try to sell that like it's fact, and it's really fiction. There's really uh, no real basis for it. And, uh, uh, you know, if anybody tried in, in the... Uh, uh, the realm of the universities and professors and scientists, any of them that really try to uh, talk about creation, they just get black boss. Nobody wants to speak up, but you are getting many more today that are speaking up. And uh, some of the, the, even the baseline for evolution is incorrect. So anyway, even as a young man years ago, that did not, I thought it took more faith to believe in evolution than to believe it was a creator that created us. So I get, begin to reason if God is real and, and the Bible is real, then I, I, I know that Jesus is real too. Actually, history proves that Jesus was a real person. I mean, there's, there's more evidence that Jesus lived here and died here than there are any other historical figure. So if that's real, and there are plenty of historical facts to prove it, there are also plenty of historical facts to prove that Jesus died on the cross, there are even historical facts that prove uh, that he was raised from the dead, or at least there were many, many people that uh, died terrible deaths because they would not recant the fact that they saw him after he was crucified, dead and buried. Justin Book of Martyrs, if you've never read that, has story after story of many who, who suffered terrible deaths claiming they have seen the risen Christ. Then you have the numerous prophecies that have been fulfilled that were written in the Word of God, the Old Testament prophecies. It's amazing as you go through the prophecies, you can see how each of these prophecies have been fulfilled. And uh, even today, New Testament prophecies are being fulfilled right before our very eyes. So, as we look at this, and, and, and as I asked myself back then, we ask ourselves now, am I going to heaven or am I really saved? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the word saved. Is that a biblical term? 
Well, some shy away from the term saved. I remember back, it's been some years ago that I went into a church for a wedding and they actually had a track laying on their display table and it read what to do when somebody tries to get you saved. Now this is in a church. You know, what to do, in other words, telling them how to avoid people that come to them talking to them about salvation, talk to them about uh, receiving Christ. And I still have that track somewhere in, in one of my files today. And I mean, I could tell you the church, I could even tell you the pastor of that church, but I won't go there today. I think I have mentioned the name in the past, but we won't do that today. But there are Christian churches, and, 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 and I have to use that term loosely because you know you really can't be a Christian unless you're saved. Uh, uh, I mean, the Bible is just abundantly clear on that. And, but to some, even evangelical is a bad word. I have friends that are chaplains and pastors and so forth that are... Uh, uh, I don't know what they call themselves, but they even think evangelical. I'm surprised that they haven't, de uh, uh, haven't uh, what do you call it, unfriended me on Facebook because uh, I am an evangelical. I believe uh, in salvation through Jesus Christ. But in the book, in the Word of God, uh, it tells us, you know, uh, if you're not saved, you're not going to heaven. Uh, matter of fact, Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. A uh, familiar verse of Scripture says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So what is it telling us here? For by grace you have been saved. In 1 Timothy 1.15, listen to what it says. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul goes on to say, of whom I am chief. To save sinners. Jesus came to save sinners. If Christ came to the world to save sinners, if that is the purpose that He came, and it is, He came to die on a cross to pay the price for our sin. Uh, matter of fact, 1 Peter 3.18, it reads there, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the just that be, be in Him, for the unjust, being the rest of us, that He might bring us to God. You see, we were all separated from God when Adam fell. We, we were separated. But Jesus came to bring us back, to reconcile us, to bring us back into a relationship with Jesus or with God. Now it goes on to say, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. So Jesus came to give Himself as a sacrifice to bring us back into a relationship with God. So I believe that it's imperative to know that we're saved. So how are we saved? It says, by grace through faith. We're not saved by our own effort. We're not saved by a religious exercise. They say, you know, if you've been baptized and are not saved, you just, you know, went in a dry center, came out a wet center. Amen. I mean, be, being baptized doesn't save you. Being baptized is a good thing. We're commanded to be baptized, but that's not what saves us. We we take communion uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, just because you take communion, that religious exercise doesn't save you. It's a good thing. He said, do this often in remembrance of me. It's something we ought to do, but it's not what saves us. He goes on to say, and also, first of all, we're not saved by being good. You know, most people out there would think you're saved because you're good. You go and say, you know, if, if you're standing before God and He would say, why shall I let you into heaven? You know, most people say, well, I'm not a bad person. I'm a pretty good person. Somehow we feel like if we do more good stuff than bad stuff, we'll get to go to heaven. But no, it's not our good works. We should be good, amen? It tells us to do good works and glorify God. But we don't do it to be saved. We do it because we are saved, amen? amen. Christians in the, er uh, the early church were known to be Christians because of their good works. I mean, they, you know, nobody else was showing uh, 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 compassion 
like Christians did at that time. And, uh, you know, we need to continue to do that, but we don't do it in order to be saved. It says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, it's by God's grace that salvation is freely offered to us through faith in Christ and by accepting His gift, by accepting salvation. The gift of God is salvation. And it's through Christ Jesus who came to save sinners. Amen? Some believe that Jesus is only a one of the ways to get to heaven. You hear a lot of that nowadays. That Jesus, yeah, Jesus was a good man. He was a prophet. And he is a way to God. But no, that's not what Jesus said. What did Jesus say? He said He is the only way. You know, Christianity is very narrow-minded. And, and that's okay. I mean, if it's the truth, it's okay. Amen? I mean, we can't just be accepting everything just to get along with everybody. We need to speak the truth, but we need to speak it in love. Jesus, in, in John 14, 6, it reads, Jesus said to him, and here's what Jesus said, I am the way. Everybody say the. the. Not a. Not multiple choice. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Listen now. No one, no one comes to the Father except through me. Now you have to understand that because we're living in a day where there's a lot of uh, erroneous uh, doctrine going around. Jesus said He's the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. That seems pretty clear to me. But if that doesn't clear it up, let me just share one more. There's really a multitude of verses. So let me share one more. In Acts 4.12, it reads, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among, by, among men by which we must be saved. And that name is Jesus. The Bible makes it very clear that we must be saved, and we're saved only through Christ Jesus who came to save us. Now the question we need to ask ourselves is this. Have I accepted Christ as my Savior? Am I putting my trust in Him? I want to share this illustration. I've shared it before. But you know, it says uh, in a uh, verse of Scripture, if you ever went to Sunday school as a child, you probably memorized this verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. It goes on to say, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He who believes is not condemned. He who believes not is condemned already. You see, we're all condemned, but through our believing in Him, we're saved. Now that word believe is not just a mental ascent. It's like, okay, I believe that. No, that word believe is a volitional belief. I mean, it's putting, uh, uh, you know, like <coughs> in cards and you're playing poker, they may say, I'm all in. And I mean, that's kind of like I'm putting everything and resting everything on the fact that I'm saved and I'm going to heaven because of what He did for me, the sacrifice He made, and I accept that gift of salvation and I accept Him into my life. It's kind of like the story I shared with you before about the, the guy on the high, high wire, you know, way up on a, a, a high-rise building. He, there was a wire that went across from one building to the other. And this man was standing there with a wheelbarrow. And he said, how many of you think I can walk and push this wheelbarrow? How many believe I can push it across this wire to the other side? And everybody's applauding. Yeah, I know you can do it. And he says, who will get in the wheelbarrow? You see, that's going from believing to believing. Amen? I mean, we can all say, I believe this, but are you all in? Are you, are you putting your trust and your faith and your hope and everything that you have, are you putting it in Jesus? I always said, I don't have a plan B. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, there's no alternative plan. I am all in. I'm trusting in Jesus. I'm trusting in the decision that I made back when I was 18 years old. I'm trusting in that decision to receive, to, to know that, that I have a relationship with Him and that someday when I leave this earth, I'll go be with Him. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So 
the question we need to ask, have I accepted Christ as my Savior? Am I putting my trust in Him and what He did for me? And if you have, I believe that you should be able to recall a particular time you did that. <clears throat> That's kind of one way of knowing whether you really accepted Christ. Now, I don't mean a particular date. You know, I did it on this date. I don't really remember that. But, you know, on this day. And, but you can remember. There was a moment you can remember that you... You know what? When I, when I married Cheryl... Of course, I remember the day where I get in trouble. You know, yeah, buddy. that was April fourteenth. It's it's instilled in my brain. I will never forget. I, I'm not like Stan. I can't get by with forgetting my anniversary date. But Aww. but uh, you know, I got that ingrained. April fourteenth. I know that better than I know my birthday. You know, but but I remember there was a moment I looked at Cheryl and I said, "I do." Or she might say, you looked at the preacher and said, I do, because I was nervous. I think I was just watching him real close. But I said, I do. I remember that moment. Even, even if I forgot the day, I remember the moment. At church, I remember the moment when I looked to Jesus and I said, I do. There was a moment I received him into my life. I've accepted the gift of salvation that he has freely offered unto me. Hallelujah. And that gives me confidence to know that I have that relationship. Just like I have confidence that I'm married to Cheryl because there was a day we stood before a preacher and said, we do. And there was a time I stood before God and I said, I do. I receive Jesus Christ. So I had confidence that I have a relationship with Jesus. Now it's time for us to build on that relationship. Remember we talked about not too long ago, there's no other foundation that is laid than that which has been laid, which is Christ Jesus he is our foundation. Now we go build upon that foundation. And we go about giving glory to God. Amen? Hallelujah. I want to close by sharing just a, a quick story with you. A 12-year-old boy became a Christian during a revival. The next week at school, his friends began to, to question him. And they said, did you see a vision? Another friend said, did you hear God speak? The youngster answered, no, to, to all these questions. <coughs> well, how, how, how did you know you were saved? Well, the boy searched for an answer, and finally he said, well, you know, it's kind of like when you catch a fish. You can't see it. You can't hear the fish. You just feel them tugging on the line. Yeah, I thought so too. I just felt God tugging at my heart. And church, that's how we know He's real. Amen? That's how we know we have a relationship with Him because we feel God tugging at our heart. I don't know. You can't really explain it. You just know it. It's like the old Pentecostals used to say. It's better felt than telt. You know, you, you just... You can't really explain it, but you know it. You, 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 can, you can just feel the tug of God. You can feel God tugging. And I tell you, church, even before you become a Christian, He wants to tug at your heart. You know, that's how we come to know Him. You know, so no man come unto Him unless He draw Him. He's, he's always trying to draw us. And when we feel that tug, that's when we need to say yes unto Him. Amen? That's when we need to receive Him, receive that gift that He freely offers us. And then after that, as we go through life, we need to recognize that tug that God pulls on our hearts sometimes to lead us and to guide us and to direct us in all of our ways. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. I know, Lord, that everything I said is just basic, uh, basic scriptures, basic uh, sermon, whatever you might want to call it, Lord. It's, it's no new revelation, but it's as of the days of old, Lord, when you first spoke to your people through your word. And Lord, I just pray that somehow you would make it fresh in our hearts this morning. Lord, I pray that as we leave this place, we will leave with the confidence that we know you because we have received that wonderful, precious gift of salvation. And this morning, if you have never received Christ as your Savior, and you, you feel Him tugging at your heart this morning, 
I would just encourage you to surrender and to just say yes to Him. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Father, we do thank You for the wonderful gift of salvation. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want to ask you a very simple question this morning. Do you know that you have a relationship with Jesus? If you cannot say that with confidence, you would like to be able to say that you have a relationship and know it this morning. I want you to simply just lift your hand. You can put it right back down, and I want to just say a prayer for you. If there's anybody this morning that you cannot say with confidence, I have a relationship with Jesus. I know there was that moment that I accepted Him, and He came into my heart. This morning, would there be anybody before we, we close? We're not in a hurry. We want to take time to pray with you this morning. Would there be anybody before we dismiss this service who would like to pray and know that you know Jesus is your Savior? Hallelujah. Father, again, we're just very, very, very thankful for all that you do for us. And for all that you do, we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.